The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. <clears throat> And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. <clears throat> this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. In fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. That which God made known through the prophet Isaiah to the king and to Israel, the Virgin Mary would conceive and bear a son. It was foretold in that prophecy recorded in Isaiah chapter 7, the 14th verse, the virgin will conceive and bear a son and you will call his name Emmanuel which Matthew records for us means God with us. That's who was conceived and who was born of the Virgin. Today's Gospel, we again hear that account of what is known as the Annunciation. When the angel Gabriel, after recently visiting Zechariah in the temple, having announced before that Zechariah's <laughs> wife, Elizabeth, in her barrenness, even old age, would give birth to his son, John, the forerunner of Jesus, that same angel Gabriel, now is announcing to Mary, who is betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David that she too would give birth to a son. And yet she had not consummated a marriage with her husband, Joseph. Elizabeth was pregnant now six months, as recorded in today's text. And Mary, in another nine months, would give birth to Jesus. This was the sign given. That this one being born would be God with us. God coming in the flesh. Just in accordance with the word as it was foretold. And yet how did Mary respond to such a message? 
not like Zechariah, whom when he heard that his wife would bear a child said, how will I know this? He was not sure that what the angel was saying was true about his wife bearing the son John. She was barren. They had no children and she was past the age of childbearing. And yet the angel told Zechariah that his wife would indeed bear a son. For him to ask, how will I know this? is a demonstration of his unbelief in the words of God's messenger. In distinction from Zechariah's response, how did Mary respond? She did not say, how will I know this? That is demonstrating unbelief. Rather, she said, how will this be? She was not questioning the word of the angel. But she was wondering, how it could be that a virgin, one who has not been with a man sexually, can conceive and bear a son. No, she was asking the question in faith. Yes, what you say, Angel Gabriel, is indeed true and will come to pass. But how can it be? To which the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And at that very word, she conceived the Christ child in her womb, without knowing a man. But according to the word, just as it was. So it came to pass. Such is, such is the power of God's holy word, that it will do what it says. What God says will indeed come to pass. By a word, God created the heavens and the earth. What was void? and empty, God set up and filled. According to his word, he delivered his people Israel from slavery in Egypt through his servant Moses. By means of his word, he sustained them throughout their journeys to the promised land. By means of his word, God fulfills what we hear today in the gospel text from Luke's gospel. And it was by his messenger angel, by his messenger Gabriel, that he made known to Mary what would be to her and the salvation of all men through her. And yet we hear these words, though we indeed believe them as they are written, as they are revealed to us. How difficult it is for us to trust in God's word throughout our lives in this day. And yet what do we have to go on? Mary was not depending on her experience, on her feelings. In fact, she wasn't going on the evidence naturally and physically as it demonstrated itself. As far as I know, it's never been proven that a virgin woman would bear a child. Of course, today we have technological advancements in vitro fertilization and, and various other means of impregnating a woman. 
but such is quite a bit different from what we see in today's text. This woman, Mary, had faith. She was favored by God and blessed by him, but not because of that faith. If you look at the text, when the angel greeted her and said, O favored one, the Lord is with you. And yet she was greatly troubled. The angel said, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Noah, too, was one who had found favor with God. And Job was seen as a just man before God, too. But was it because of who they were or what they did that they were blessed so? Was it because Mary would, would have such a great faith that she was chosen by God to bear the Christ child? Mm -mm. Rather, was she blessed by God because God blessed her. And these words are helpful for us too and encouraging for us because God blesses us and so we are blessed. God forgives you and therefore you are forgiven. God gives you life and therefore you have life. You stand before him, before God on account of Jesus Christ having his favor fully upon you, because to you he has bestowed it. Not because of what may be or what might be in the future. Rather, God blesses you, and therefore you are blessed. Mary was called favored one. And the words, the Lord is with you, were announced to her. The Lord is with you are the words announced to you as well. We hear it even in our services, don't we? The Lord be with you. Which are not words of possibility, but words, rather, of reality. The Lord is indeed with you on account of his son, Jesus Christ. The one who was born of a virgin, the one who came into our flesh, taking on all our sin as a man. who went to the cross and shed his blood as a man for you. And yet this man is also called the Son of the Most High, the Son of the Highest. And he is called Holy, the Son of God. To Mary it was announced that this one would be born to her. And look at the faith that Mary had too. At the conclusion of today's text, what does she say after she receives answer from the angel Gabriel? After she says, how will this be? And the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The angel Gabriel tells her about Elizabeth, who is conceived and is this in the sixth month. And then says those memorable words, nothing will be impossible with God. A more literal translation may be as follows. With God, every word, everything will not be impossible. But what happens if we don't see that? What happens if we don't feel it? What happens if we don't expect it because of our circumstances, because of the evidence laying out right in front of us. Well, if God says it, then it must be. If God says it, it will be, even if we don't see it with our eyes, even if we don't sense it with our senses, even if all evidence indicates otherwise. That, my friends, is faith. Faith that says amen to what God himself 
declares. We find such testimony of God's promises fulfilled in today's text. The Old Testament reading from 2 Samuel reminds us that it is God who promises David a house that he himself will build. The very words that the angel Gabriel announced also to Mary. When the angel Gabriel said, The Lord God will give to him that is to Jesus the throne of of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end God gave the words to Nathan the prophet to announce to declare to proclaim to David that the Lord will make you a house and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me your throne shall be established forever. Thus David had good intentions, we might say. Maybe his motivations were in the right place, but he himself would not build the house. God himself would. Not according to David, but according to God's merciful and gracious will. And this, too, is our confidence as God's people. Because just as God has fulfilled his promises from the Old Testament in Jesus, even in declaring that the virgin would conceive, so God will continue to fulfill his promises today. And he does. Regardless of size, regardless of how many, regardless of evidence, regardless of everything that speaks contrary to what God himself declares. As one theologian had said, as it happened to Mary with her faith, so it happens to all of us that we must believe what is opposed to our understanding, thoughts, experience. An example. For that is the property and nature of faith that it will not permit anything to stand outside of itself on which a person might rely and rest, but only the mere word of God and the divine promise. As another had said, God is powerful enough. He is able to affect this, that is, even the immaculate conception even though it is contrary to nature. God acts contrary to what we see. God acts according to his word. Therefore, even a virgin can conceive and bear a son, the Christ child. Even one who is God comes into the flesh to save sinners. Even one who dies in the curse of death on the cross rises on the third day. This is nothing other than your Savior and mine, Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us pray that as we hear his word and his promises, as we rejoice in Christ's birth, and rejoice in his second coming that we too, like Mary, say, we are the servants of the Lord. Let it be to us according to your word. Your will be done, O Lord. Your good and your gracious will be done unto us through your Son, who was born of a virgin, who suffered and died and was buried, who lives again having resurrected the third day, and who now reigns forever. Reign over us, O Lord, and grant us to be your faithful servants. Amen.